So three years ago, I was an executive at a Fortune 50 company and I had, you know, the big home and the luxury German car in my garage and a six-figure income. And I was really unhappy. In the personal and professional front, I was kind of at a crossroads. And I look around me and I see that there are people like this all over. I think it's a global epidemic, people who are miserably successful. I spent some time on a mission, sort of my North Star, and I came up with six words, learning, helping, teaching, with graceful, flawed authenticity. And each of these words meant something very, very deep to me. About a year and a half ago, the book came out, and I was just reflecting on how tentative I was. I'm a first time, self-published, no-name author. Which bookstore is going to want me? And when I think about that, and I think about so often, we hold ourselves back because I filled out the form and I sent my application to Barnes & Noble and Barnes & Noble accepted and now my book is in Barnes & Noble stores. I'm currently on a multi-city US Barnes & Noble tour. The book has exploded. I'm speaking all over the world. Sometimes it just feels so surreal. <laughs> Marsha Goldsmith, who is amazing, who is the New York Times bestseller of multiple books, What Got You Here Won't Get You There, and Mojo. He was gracious enough to endorse the book. This, this wonderful woman has surprised me immensely and I'm going to sing the praises of her. I really like the way, um, the opening, where she moved us around immediately and mixed up the diversity in the room so that we were, it, it, I really liked that, I thought it was brilliant. I was born the youngest of four girls. People called my father and said, we're so sorry. And my father said to them, he's no more, but he's behind my shoulder at this moment, I feel. He said, give me your number and call me in 20 years. And you tell me how your son's doing, and I will tell you how my daughter's doing. There are things that we can achieve that we don't dream of because we hold ourselves back. I was reading an article about how we become unstoppable. And I think there's something very key in that becoming unstoppable. Most often we get in our own way, right? Five Judgments is based on the premise that there are strong and powerful judgments that people make about us which do not have anything to do with the caliber of our work. And the first judgment is what I call reputational currency or buzz. So even before we walk into a room, 
even before we are considered for that project or that assignment or that job, there is a certain word of mouth that goes around and that is reputational currency or buzz. And then the second judgment is what I call physical impact. And that's not just how handsome or attractive or beautiful you are, but it's your total physical presence. So, you know, do you stand up straight? Um, do you look directly at a person? Do you have a, a sense of style? What, what are the clothes that you wear, your shoes? It's just your overall physical presence. And then the third judgment is what I call auditory cues. And auditory cues is not just your voice, it's not just the words that you use, but um, I coach a lot of women, particularly technical, successful women, and you know, that's one of the things I say to them. The moment you go, ha ha ha, and you start giggling and laughing and tossing your hair, you just lost a whole bunch of power. And then the fourth judgment is the one that I'm actually most pleased about in the book, and it's called Distinguishing Markers. So I was looking at two different disciplines. So if you look at genetics, and if you look at just that whole area, we talk about DNA and we talk about genetic markers, and that's about what makes a person unique physically. And then in marketing, there is the concept of unique selling propositions about products. So if you take the combination of the unique selling proposition of marketing and the genetic markers of DNA, and if you put them together, then what you see is what I call distinguishing markers. What are the two or three things that people remember about you? Behavioral, physical, situational, that make you stand out, that people remember about you. And then the final judgment, the fifth judgment, is your work product or your output. People are surprised, even stunned sometimes, when I say that that is the fifth judgment because they feel that um, this should be the first judgment. And that's really the whole point of five judgments. It's not about being fair or unfair. It's about recognizing that people make these judgments. And think about what it is that causes us to be so miserable. Um, I have an acronym for misery. And I think the M in misery stands for the fact that what causes us to be so materialistic it doesn't really help us. And then the I stands for feeling inadequate. No matter how successful we look outside, it's not enough. And the S stands for stress. I mean, all we have to do is look at the newspapers or look around us, everybody is stressed. And that causes the E, which is for us to feel empty inside. And then the R is the sense of righteousness, this feeling that I'm better than somebody else and I'm proving a point. And then the final part of what causes the misery is what I call the Yeti, our own personal abominable snowman. We talk about this in many aspects. We call it our demons. But basically, it's that voice in our head that keeps telling us that we are not good enough. And so when I flip that around and I say, what is it that makes me feel that I'm more happy now? I think the first H of happy is health. And I don't mean just physical health, though that is a very important piece of it. And I also mean emotional health and mental health. It's just such a crazy world with that stress that I mentioned. And then the A is for allies. And by allies, I mean having the right people next to us, people that are loyal to us, people that care for us enough to be direct and honest and guide us, and people who support us every step of the way. Allies also involves removing the toxic people in one's lives. And then the first P stands for purpose. As I mentioned, having a vision, having a North Star. Um, you know, this learning, helping, teaching, that has helped me guide me in just the things that I do and don't do, the choices that I make. And then the second P is something that I am fascinated by. It's power. And when we talk about power, sometimes we think about aggressive force. That's not the kind of power I'm talking about. I'm talking about the power to make a positive change. I'm talking about taking back one's authentic power, the power to be, which is the why in happy, yourself. If you think about it, you're really the only one who can be yourself. So isn't it kind of sad when we try to become somebody else or put on the mask and 
act as we think that society wants us to. So Devjani Biswas is our uh, guest speaker today. She comes to us uh, from several different avenues, actually. Devjani was just recognized as the Woman of the Year by the National Association of Professional Women. When we talk about emotional intelligence, I would like to talk about two or three things. One of them is how we react under stress and pressure. And then also this tightrope walking that we do between empathy and kindness and assertiveness, which sometimes becomes borderline aggressive. Always do that which you are afraid to do. So that's my question is, what would you do if you weren't afraid? And then my second question is, what are you waiting for? <laughs>